Hey guys, it's Martin from MW Sculpts here. Lately, I've been enthralled by the world of Mordheim, so I dug out my old possessed warband from the garage. Well, at least what was left of it. Luckily, in this game, you can use other minis as recruits into your warband, so I enlisted these archers. However, I thought it would be great to get them looking a bit more possessed, like the characters in my old set. Why not create our own possessed archer right here in Blender? Here's a preview of the result we'll be aiming for. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. One of the key things we need to explore is the scale of the existing minis. I just have a little 15 centimeter ruler here to help me understand the dimensions of these characters. If you're interested to know about any of the add-ons I'm using in this video, please check the description below. Starting out by creating a small decal, which will be on the waist. I'm just box modeling an arrow shape and I need to create a separate video about box modeling and like an introduction to it, but we won't be covering that in this video as that's a broad topic in itself really. And I'm just moving the origin so that it's right at the bottom of the arrow. And then what I could do is using Alt D, create link duplicates of the arrow and if you hit the R key and then type in the uh, degrees that which you want to rotate, then you can, can accurately rotate these arrows. And then I'm just using a cylinder for the center and a skull from my asset browser. As you can see, I already have a character-like structure in place, uh, which I've called the Armature Poser. If you check out my Gumroad, you can download this for yourself and use it as a starting point for your own characters. Moving on to the mask and the hood now, just making a duplicate of the head and then I'm masking out the top and using mask slice and fill holes. Then we have a, an object about the shape of our mask, making another copy of the head so that I can pull that out into a hood like shape. We can use snake hook just to bend that into um, a shape similar to our existing miniatures. For the bow, we're starting with a cylinder and then we're just elongating it over the Z axis. If we use the brush symmetry on the X and Y, then we're able to use brushes like inflate and pinch to create the, the correct form for this bow. And uh, we can use snake hook to twist it into place. Uh, before I use the snake hook tool, I'm using remesh so there's enough geometry to twist. Onto some initial posing now. So that's just selecting each of the objects and uh, hitting the R key to rotate them. Some of these objects are parented together so that uh, when you rotate one of them, then the children rotate at the same time. Uh, if you're interested in understanding a bit more how this is set up, or perhaps you're a complete beginner to Blender and creating characters in this way, check out my complete beginner series, which will be uh, helpful getting you started. As we've been measuring our existing minis using the little ruler, it's important in Blender that we use the ruler as well to uh, make sure we're getting the right scales. So if you look in object mode and find the measure tool, you can click and drag in an area on the viewport and measure how big objects are. I find it useful to go into orthographic mode while doing this to ensure that I'm getting the correct measurement. A big feature of uh, this possessed archer are his robes. So if we select the chest and hips object, then create a sphere in the middle, make, make a duplicate of them all, hit Control J and remesh them all together. And then from there, we're able to shape this object. And if you're struggling understanding how to place cloth folds or how they, they should move in space, check out my cloth sculpting video. That goes into a bit more detail on the uh, the logic behind where I'm placing some of these folds. Of course, you can always refer to the placement of folds on existing miniatures as well, which uh, helps you get an understanding of how many folds that you should use and uh, where they should be placed. I've just been developing the arms a little bit by selecting uh, the arm and the forearm and then merging them together just like we did with the chest and hips. And then you can use the mesh filter inflate to quickly expand the object once it's all together. And then that'll help us create the rest of the robes. 
not really happy with the current pose, so let's try something new. I find a lot of references on Pinterest and places like that, so if you just uh, look up archer poses or something similar, then uh, you can find a variety of different uh, ideas for poses. Placing some of these initial folds on the bottom part of the robes, and uh, I'm just keeping in mind the direction which they should be flowing, maybe thinking about the direction in which he is moving. So if you should imagine him twisting in a certain direction, then the folds will flow in a sort of appropriate direction. And I think this helps gives the character some energy and flow and makes it look a little bit more interesting than just uh, straight lines. Bringing in the trusty handy hand now. And this is a, just a collection of objects that you can pose. If you want to know more, I, I realize I'm forwarding you off to various videos, but these are topics on their own, really, to understand how they work, how they're constructed. If you check out my Gumroad, you can download this structure for yourself. There's also a video explaining how this works and how to create your own. I find for myself that it really speeds up the process of creating hands. Taking a copy of the arms and the chest robes, Merging them together as we've done before. Control shift and dragging a mask out in the shape of the, of like shoulder cloth. Not sure what to call it. And then using mask slice and fill holes, you'll have that sort of shape remaining and you can remesh that and position it over the shoulders. If you don't already, I would recommend enabling the bool tool add-on, which is what I'm doing right here. I'm using it to cut away from this shoulder cloth. And I've just created a cube, and then if you select both objects, and then if you use the difference on the Bool Tool add-on, then you can cut away from that object uh, with a nice clean shape. We can add some little details like skulls and rivets. Uh, keep using the measure tool just to see uh, how big these objects are, because when we 3D print them, we don't want things to get too small, otherwise they won't show up on our print. Busting out a curve now, and we can just use a simple cube and map it along the curve to create a chain-like structure. We can use the array modifier and the curve modifier to let it follow the curve. And if you just want a few more details on how this is done, you can check out my ropes and chains and braids video. And it just goes into step by step how to create structures like this. One tip with working with a chain like this is to parent these objects together. So if you select the array of cubes and then the curve and parent those objects together, you only need to move, select one of them and then you'll move both of them together because they are dependent on the positioning of each object. So they need to stay in the same position relative to each other in order to work correctly. Creating a single arrow now, uh, using three different objects. So we've got like a, a triangle, and then we've got a cylinder, and we're going to add another object at the end for the feathers. Once we have one of the arrows looking the way we want, we can create a duplicate of those objects and join them together and we can use that copy and make link duplicates using alt d and just position them in the general area of the first one to create a collection of them a cool little addition to the cloth here is just bunching up the material as it meets the belt this just creates the impression that there's a lot of leftover material once it meets that area and if you just you can use clay strips and draw sharp just to point that area out. Now that we've got the bulk of the objects in place, we can start to refine the ones we have. And uh, this just involves increasing the resolution while remeshing. And then you've got more, more polygons to work with. And then smoothing and using draw sharp and the standard brush to just emphasize some of the forms that we are trying to to show on the uh, on the objects. As you can see with the hand structure we have, we're able to select each part of the hand and rotate. And this allows us to quickly pose 
they did a position that we're happy with. And also, once we've finished, we can select all those parts and simply control J to join them all together, remesh, and then you can refine this further. If you remember our decal from the beginning, um, one little improvement you can make to these simple shapes is adding a bevel modifier and then a subdivision surface modifier. And what this does is it keeps the edges sharp, but you can control how sharp they are. So you don't want the objects to be perfectly sharp because it's not really realistic. So you can make them so they're slightly rounded on the edges and they just look a little bit more realistic that way. Another detail which will keep our new character in line with the existing ones is some damage to the uh, robes. So I'm just using these triangle shapes to embed into the robes and we can then use the bool tool add-on again to subtract away these shapes. Showing the whole unedited process of sculpting a character like this is not the most YouTube friendly content. If you're interested in seeing the whole unedited process for this, be sure to check out my Patreon where you can get the uh, unedited videos of the sculpting process. As a finishing touch, I've uh, just noticed that the tears I put in are quite a bit bigger than the uh, characters that I'm referring to. So just masking out each one of the tears and then reversing the mask and then I can use the pinch tool and it'll only affect those areas. Thanks for watching and hopefully there was something here for you. If you'd like to support the channel, check out my Patreon, where you can get free miniatures and access to unedited sculpting content. Also, early access to videos like these. We also have a Discord community, where you can ask any questions you might have or show off your latest sculpt. Check the description for an invite. A big thank you to everyone who's chosen to support me so far. Check out their names here. Hot off the printer is this two-handed axe that I created recently for the channel. Also, the Goblin Caster character, where I showed off some techniques and tips for sculpting your own clothing. I'll throw up a link to both these videos at the end. See you all in the next one.